Given the correlational nature of this study, we have no reason specifically to think that the nose is the cause of the difference in top speed. I hope you thought of some of the examples that I thought of, which is potentially that the F-18 type planes maybe had smaller engines. Maybe the F-22s, because they're typically stealth planes with this type of nose, maybe they were flying different types of missions. So they achieved higher top speeds, potentially because they just went up higher in the altitude or they were observing or running different types of missions. So there are plenty of differences between these 50 planes that had the F-18 type nose and the planes that had the F-22 nose that have nothing to do with the nose type in particular, but have everything to do with the types of planes that count in each of these categories. Now, each of these different effects or each of these different factors that have nothing to do with the nose could be called confounding variables, which are an extraneous variable that correlates with both the dependent variable and the independent variable. Now let's take a second to unpack this. Remember, an extraneous variable is any variable that's not of direct interest to the experimenter, but does have a relationship to the dependent variable, the thing we're measuring. So let's take engine size. Engine size certainly relates to the dependent variable of top speed. Planes with larger engines certainly can achieve higher top speeds on average. Now, engine size was not of direct interest in this study. Rather, we were interested in nose type. However, if engine size varies as a function of nose type, the independent variable, then we have a confound. Because notice, if planes that have the F-18 type nose tend to have smaller engines, then when we measure nose type, we're actually wrapping in the effect of the confounding variable. This is a problem for us because we can't distinguish what is actually causing the effect on top speed. If we look at the method of difference, which is what we're trying to apply here, we don't have a circumstance where everything is in common except for nose type. Instead, what we have is a confounded study, a study in which factor five is not the only thing that differs between the two circumstances. In fact, a great deal of other things differ between the circumstances, and we can't really be sure which of those different circumstances or factors are actually responsible for the observed difference that we measured. So a correlational study will not allow us to make any definitive claims about the nose type. In that study, we can't really say much of anything except for the planes that happen to have the F-22 type nose tend to, on average, reach a higher top speed. Now let's try this as a true experiment. Suppose I go to the hangar, but instead of just finding planes that have the different types of nose, instead, I'm simply going to randomly assign by taking a sticker and putting on 50 of the planes sample one, and 50 of the planes sample two. So these are 100 planes, 50 of which I simply put a little sticker that says sample one, and the 50 other planes where I put a sticker that says sample two. So I've randomly assigned these planes to different conditions, indifferent to any other characteristic about the plane, just completely randomly. Here, I'm gonna be controlling extraneous variables, because notice sample one and sample two will on average have planes about the same in terms of engine size, about the same in terms of wingspan, or anything else that we might be able to think about relates to top speed. Now that I've randomly assigned these 100 planes to two different samples, I'm going to manipulate the independent variable. Remember, the independent variable here is the thing we actually want to test, and in this case, it's nose type. So to do this, and this is going to be a stretch of the imagination, I'm going to remove the noses of all 100 planes, and the ones that I stuck the sticker that says sample one, I will reattach F-18 type noses, and for the planes that I put a sticker on that says sample two, I'll attach F-22 type noses. Now, let's pause here for a second, because this will probably destroy the planes, and is probably not something we can particularly manipulate without being destructive to the properties of aerodynamics and other things that these planes are designed to do. Now this is actually a concern in all experiments. We must be critical about whether we can actually manipulate the independent variable, whether the units of analysis, in this case planes, can actually accept equally well the different levels of the independent variable. Now you might think in most studies this isn't a problem, but imagine we were doing a study on whether individuals who adopt a male type persona or a female type persona behave certain ways in an experiment. Certainly males will have an easier time adopting a male type persona than a female type persona, and vice versa for females. So just like the planes, the manipulation may not be equally well applied on each different individual in the study. 
But for now, let's just pretend that we can actually do this and we've been able to manipulate the nose types of these planes. So now we have 50 planes that, whether they had a conical nose at the start or not, actually do now, so sample one, and we have a whole nother sample of planes, whether or not they had the raptor type nose to begin with, they do now. So we've manipulated that variable. The next thing we're gonna do is run our test in a tunnel. So before, remember we actually just observed the logs of these planes. We have no idea what these planes were doing when they were actually being flown before. But now we're gonna further control extraneous variables by running the planes under the exact same conditions. And so a wind tunnel is a great metaphor for an experiment. We are controlling as many things as we can such that the individuals who are running through the experiment experience the experiment in as close of a way as possible. Now finally, once we've run the test in the tunnel, we're gonna measure the dependent variable this time. So we're gonna measure the top speed it can achieve. Now, this is hard to think about in a wind tunnel circumstance, but when measuring top speed stability, we can think of the top speed at which the planes first vibrate. So a measure of top speed. Now suppose we do this and we end up with identical average measurements. So the planes that we manipulated to have the conical type nose have a top speed recorded at 1,327 miles an hour, and the planes we manipulated to have the raptor noses achieve the top speed of 1,683 miles an hour. So if we go back and try to play the game of what other things might have caused this difference, it becomes incredibly hard to find any systematic difference between these two sets of planes other than our manipulation. Because before we even ran the study, before we even manipulated the independent variable, via random assignment, we made these samples essentially the same on average. All those confounding variables we had before, all the things that messed up our method of difference, are now actually all the same. And in fact, in the center of this Venn, we can see that all factors measured and unmeasured are equivalent on average. Remember, that's what random assignment does. Engine size, wingspan, anything that might have some relation to top speed is now on average about the same in the two different samples. So, by doing an experiment rather than a correlational study, we've actually been able to measure the world in a way that lets us say something definitive about the effect of the variable we want to measure, the independent variable. And this is all made possible through these characteristics of a true experiment. Manipulation, actually changing something for some individuals, and control, making sure that every other variable that might have a relationship to the dependent variable is the same or at least constant across the different levels or the conditions of the independent variable. And random assignment is gonna be our principal way of doing this. And remember, this is that chance alone dictates which treatment each individual receives. And in so doing, we ensure that there are no systematic differences between the groups.